Hi, everybody. Welcome into this week's edition of the Coach O Show, where we give you an inside look at Northern Michigan football. My name is Ryan Beckman, along with uh, Coach O himself, Wildcat head football coach Chris Ostrowski. Coming up on this week's show, we'll take a look back at the Wildcats uh, game against Hillsdale, look at the highlights, talk to uh, offensive lineman Kyle Stuke, and look ahead to the homecoming matchup with Michigan Tech. And uh, Coach, uh, a heartbreaking 13-10 loss against Hillsdale on, on Saturday, but all week you talked about it being a barometer game for you guys to judge where this program is at. What did that barometer tell you after the game? You no know, question. I, I think um, in terms of where we are in our progress as a program, I've been the head coach for two years and three games, and I think uh, we've had some, some marquee wins by anybody's uh, uh, opinion in terms of the first year w winning those critical games and uh, doing some things that year and then last year uh, having that little run there in the middle of the year. But I thought this game solidified the fact that we can go on the road, play a top tier team in this league and go punch for punch with them. And uh, I think that the result in the end was crushing. It really was. I mean, it was it was a crushing situation for all of us. Um, but we're going to learn and grow and move forward from it. Um, you know, we talk about keep keep punching, keep punching, keep chopping, keep doing the things we think are right uh, as a program. And uh, my God, we had a we had a, a couple plays, and, and that's a whole different game. One play, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's a whole different game. So. Um, we're excited for this week and we'll move forward, but in terms of the parameter and where we are as a program, um, gosh, we're awful close now. Third week in a row that the defense really played well for you guys, uh, held Hillsdale scoreless for, for three quarters and just a couple of plays there, and, and the fourth quarter was a big uh, change, but uh, what did you see from the defense? Well, that's the difference. Yeah. That, that's the difference in us today to two years ago to even last year is we're, we're maturing as a defense. We're, we're establishing a mentality that is critical in terms of winning championship football, um, and, and I think um, that goes a long way. It's a philosophy that we've really entrenched ourselves in here um, over the course of really the last two years, two years and three games sure, sure. and it's grown and it's matured and I think our defensive staff is doing a tremendous job really coaching every day just coaching uh, and as long as we keep doing that we're going to be real good. Offensively uh, seven different players have a pa uh, reception for you guys yesterday. Do you like that uh, variety in the guys uh, catching the ball? Yeah no question anybody that's seen us play offense really has seen any offense I've been associated with we spread it around. Uh, the crazy thing for us offensively is I haven't seen a group that it was indicative of uh, 50 percent on third downs we were 12 of 21 we had over 400 yards of total offense we won the time of possession and we didn't turn the ball over all things that should be recipe for a great day offensively uh, so we were able to move the football uh, and points really were a challenge uh, for us uh, but yeah spreading around and getting a lot of people involved is the way to go well, we'll have uh, more on uh, this game when we take a look at the highlights a little bit later on in the show coming up next we'll talk to offensive lineman kyle stu right here on the coach o show the Coach O Show is sponsored by Welcome back to the Coach O Show, joined now by junior offensive lineman for the Wildcats, Kyle Stuke. And, and Kyle, you've been a mainstay on that uh, Wildcat off offensive line now for, uh, for a few years. What do you attribute uh, that to? Uh, I attribute that to our uh, training staff, really, our awesome training staff. They do a really good job of keeping us healthy and taking care of us. Uh, well, our head trainer, Jason Laxo, always there, and the students that are the athletic training students, even when they don't have to be there, they're there to give us treatment and help us stay on the field. As you uh, now junior year as, as, uh, on the offensive line with the Wildcats, talk about the guys that you're with this year, those other four guys that, that you're down there in the trenches with. Oh, man, they're great. Uh, our offensive line this year is awesome. We have uh, left tackle Jordan Strope, got uh, beautiful blonde flowing hair. Uh, our left guard, Jamal Brown, dad, Gilbert Brown. If you're a Packer fan, you're definitely going to know who that is. Um, then we got right guard, James Bester. Uh, He's a funny guy, I'd say, got all the jokes. Um, then our right tackle, Brad Cotts, is just a, a beast. And when we all get together and hit up the Chinese buffet, that's uh, <laughs> something to behold. Watch out uh, for that uh, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> what do you like about uh, being on the offensive line? Uh, it's just a really good way to get a release, uh, release from your daily buildups. Uh, life gets you down sometimes, and you get frustrated, and everybody needs that type of release. And, for me, it's playing offensive line. You get to go out and legally hit someone. Sure. 
after two weeks on the road, you guys are, are back at home this coming Saturday. Uh, what are you looking forward to about getting getting back home? Uh, just being back home with all of our fans and having the dome packed with students and family and not having to go on 13-hour bus trips and just everything. What do you guys do to pass the time on, on the bus? Uh, I mean, it's hard, but we watch movies, uh, hang out with each other, talk, and lots of sleep. Lots and lots of sleep. <laughs> this weekend you mentioned uh, with the students and the families and, and all that. It should be packed homecoming and, and a Michigan <laughs> Tech weekend. Uh, talk a little bit about that. What are you looking forward to from that, from that aspect? Oh, just the noise. Just the noise. It's so fun when you play football in front of a packed house and you get, sometimes when you're blocking you don't really get to see the plays develop, but you can hear them when, the, when it's packed in there. It's always uh, a nice treat, I'm sure, when the, when the crowd goes wild, especially in, in the Dome. It's uh, one heck of a place to play. Oh yeah, no, no doubt. It's the best, play, best Division II facilities you can have. Cal, give us a little uh, background uh, on, your, on yourself, how you found your way to northern Michigan and, and where you're from. Uh, I'm from a little town right outside Green Bay, Wisconsin called West Pier. Um, won state championship my senior year, 35-0. Um, first school to actually send me a recruiting letter was Northern. And uh, Coach, o really, uh, Coach O and Coach Boss really got me good. And they're the reason I came up here. Is they did a real good job recruiting. Kyle, uh, glad to have you here. and We appreciate uh, you joining us on the program. And uh, good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, hey, thank you. You bet. It's junior offensive lineman Kyle Stuke. We'll take a break. We'll look at the highlights next here on the Coach O Show. Hey, Wildcat fans, it's trivia time. Which former NMU player was drafted to the New England Patriots in 1976? Was it A, Tim Fox, B, Shane Richardson, or C, Stu Betts? Find out after the break. Which former NMU player was drafted to the New England Patriots in 1976? The correct answer was C, Stu Betts. Back here on the Coach O Show, and a little extra trivia. The answer to our trivia question was uh, Kyle Stuke, who we just talked to, his high school coach. So, uh, nice tie in uh, this week on the program. But uh, as we get back here on the Coach O Show, time to look at uh, highlights uh, from uh, uh, the 13 10 heartbreaking loss against Tillsdale, but tons of highlights uh, from the game. You're killing me with that heartbreak. I'm sorry, time. Coach. Know, <laughs> you know, but it, it was. But you know, as we talk about every week, this, this is really my favorite segment of the show. We get ourselves going here, and you know we're going to spread you out and use the field, and that, that's not a mystery. And uh, it, generically speaking, here we're, we're playing a, a really good football team defensively and offensively. They're sound in their approach, so you really got to work hard for every ounce. And I think up front we do a heck of a job of putting a hat on a hat here, getting physical, and finding the crease. This was a third and inches mm -hmm. of a huge play in the game for us. Um, and, and, and our, our players really responded. And uh, Wyatt does a great job getting, Wyatt Jerson does a great job getting vertical and a first down. It was a big play for us in terms of momentum uh, and getting a push. Uh, but again, uh, we use this, this, this view just as a teaching tool. Sure. Um, and generically, you get an opportunity to see our offensive line really work, work in unison, really be physical, and, and we hit that thing and get upfield in a hurry. So that's, that's a really good football play for us. Another big afternoon for Wyatt Jersey, another uh, over 100 yards rushing. You know, and I think that's the, heart, that's the heartbreak we're dealing yeah. with. You're running for over 100 yards. You're throwing for nearly 300 yards. You're doing the things. You're protecting the football, you know, sure. uh, those kind of things. That, that's, and that's why we're, we're, we're really feeling pretty good. Now, we get ourselves in a situation where um, obviously the rain's coming down pretty good. You see <laughs> yes. it on the screen. The weather was crazy. Um, and we get a huge play here on a drive uh, pretty late in the game. And uh, our quarterback here, Shea Brown, he stands tall, uh, which is critical for us, puts the ball up in the air, and, and a local product uh, from Michigan, Gabe Eppert, makes a great catch on a post route for a touchdown. And it's, that's exciting football. I mean, that's, that's big-time college football in terms of executing a play. Uh, and, you know, I couldn't be happier, and that was a great play for us, so we were excited about that. You talk about Shea Brown standing tall. I mean, he really took a, a hit at the end of that play, but to complete that pass is, uh, with, that, with that distance and accuracy is quite something. There's no question, and, and you, if you see those guys come through here, he stood tall, and he understood the only chance we had success was if he took the shot, and that's a mark of a good player that's growing uh, in terms of maturity, and Gabe does a great job beating his guy over the top. And you got a Wildcat touchdown there, and that looks pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah, five receptions, almost 100 yards uh, receiving for Gabe on the afternoon. Big day for Gabe. Big day for Gabe. Here, here's another one for us here. Um, we get ourselves in an empty set, and uh, Shea Brown just makes a, 
an unbelievable throw in the bucket, if you will. And this is Austin Young, another local product um, from Escanaba. It just makes a great play. And you talk about a kid that, you know, he is the Wildcat Award winner. He's everything that you want sure. in a football player. And we get the ball up in the air here. He drops it in a bucket, and that's a big-time catch. Uh, that's a big-time catch at the end of the game. Puts us in position to win uh, for sure. Yeah, huge catch uh, for Austin Young there and, and just a, a tremendous athlete and a great young man. Absolutely. We see this view here. You see how extraordinary that catch was. Boom. Great play for us. Absolutely. Another uh, player I want to touch on who had, uh, had a nice afternoon, uh, Trey Hipke, three receptions yeah, in the afternoon. Yeah. You know, Trey is a guy that's been in the program a long time, but God, he just gives you so much energy. He's the reason why you coach. Uh, I, in terms of, of my evaluating our town. I don't know if I've seen a young man that has um, just gotten better and better and better. He for certain is uh, is really got a great future ahead of him here in the next year and a half. Absolutely. How much did that rain play a factor or did it play a factor for both teams in the game? You know, I think, uh, you know, it, it was raining and it was windy and it was it was coming down sideways. So I would say a little bit for sure there as it as it got going. But I don't know if it was a, a factor that changed the complexion of the game. How has this offense grown from, from week one to now heading into to week three after week? You know, it's, hard. it's a hard question, Ryan. You know, you, you, we just came off a game, we scored 10 points. Sure. Um, if you look at the stat sheet, you'd say we scored 40 points. So I would say it's grown considerably from week one. At the same time, we've got a lot of work to do this week. So that's where we are offensively. We'll take a break here on the Coach O Show. We'll look at the defensive highlights next, right after this. The Coach O Show is sponsored by... Back here on the Coach O Show, well, we've looked at the offensive highlights, and now let's uh, get in to see what uh, what the defense did on Saturday afternoon. Well, the defense played their tail off. They that, sure that's did. What the defense did um, just great energy, a great pace. You know, the big thing for us defensively as we get into breaking these things down is we really want to establish 11 guys that can run. I think that was critical. So we did a lot of shuffling in terms of personnel. So uh, this first play lends into to, uh, that. We've got our, our, uh, our field side defensive end or, or, or to the right here on the screen. Uh, Trevor Cruzel, who was an H-back for us, so we moved from offense to defense. And I think when you look at our defense, there's 11 guys that can really run. Mm -hmm. And I think that was really important to me um, and, and uh, Coach Ballard in terms of how we want to create uh, an atmosphere on defense. you got to be able to run the play. Sure. Uh, and this is a great example. Um, that's pretty good offensive lineman there, believe it or not. And Trevor just is outclassing him at this point. And what a, what a, a deal this kid has made in terms of going from offense to defense as a junior. And I think he's having as good a year uh, as anyone in the league at this point. Uh, just a great player for us and does it all the right way. Uh, he's consistent. He's a gentleman. He's a great student. He's primed to graduate in December. Uh, uh, we think he's, he's, he's the whole package. So again here, as you look in the corner, gets up, field in a hurry. And that's just, that's just a great individual effort. And again, you got a lot of green hats by the ball now. You got Trevor making the play, but you got one, two, three, four, five, six kids uh, right in that area, right in that box. Um, and when that happens, you're going to have success on defense. Yeah, Trevor just seems to have a knack to, to getting into the backfield, and yeah, yeah, whether it's the running back or quarterback, you can no get question. to him. He uses his hands fantastic, and he really does a great job with it. Uh, this next play is a huge play for us. Um, <clears throat> this is a big part in the game. Um, and, and this is off of a, a sudden change, and we get a great pick. They're going for the kill shot here. They think they're going to throw the ball in the end zone, and that's typically would have been a touchdown two years ago when we played them. Um, but now uh, that's an interception. That's Pat Ryan, who uh, was as heavily recruited a young man from downstate as we had, and uh, what a future he's going to have at safety. And this was the, the, uh, one of two great plays he made for us. So Pat does a great job for us there, and that was a great play off of a, a sudden change. So. As you can see, the weather was really good. Yeah, no kidding. Point. Yeah, for sure. All right, as we move forward here in the process, now again, uh, they're, they're down. We've got to create a great football play. This is an unbelievable moment in the game. It's 10 uh, to 13. It's third down. We've got to get a stop and get the ball back. And this is the play we make um, to put ourselves in position to win the game. And again, Pat Ryan, what a great pick. 
uh, on the deal here. We thought uh, he had a chance to go all the way and a little physicality at the end. And what, what an awesome game for that young man, a breakout game for him. So I'm excited for him. Yeah, absolutely. And, and going back to last year, talking about Pat Ryan, that's just a name that, that's been talked around the, the Wildcat football program since, since he got here. No question. You know, and he's, he has two older brothers that were great GLIAC players for Ferris. Um, and he was going to Ferris. He was going to Saginaw. And at the end, he signed with us. And uh, just a great football family. And uh, he's, he's another gentleman that's great in the class room handles himself the right way all the time and he's only a sophomore and he's only going to get bigger and stronger and faster so uh, again a breakout day for Pat Ryan. How about uh, another defensive back that had a nice afternoon I thought was Keyshawn Walker. Keyshawn Walker coming into his own little bit a Dearborn product keeps getting better every day he's an athletic presence uh, it hasn't been always easy for Keyshawn and he's going to keep on getting better uh, so we're we're excited that he's contributing in the, in the manner that he is. Absolutely. And as you said, when we opened the show, been real pleased with the way the defense has played this year. Yeah, so far, so far, it's been, it's been what championships are made of. You play great defense, the rest happens for you. We'll take a break here on the uh, Coach O Show. When we come back, we'll uh, talk about homecoming, about the matchup with Michigan Tech. That's next. Stick with us right here on the Coach O Show. We'll head to the final segment here on the Coach O Show. And Wildcats, after two weeks on the road, Coach, get to come back home and play in the Superior Dome. And if you're like me, you got to be looking forward to, to being home for a week. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is a great venue to play college football in. And, and, and when you're home, it's always, it's always better when you're home. And this week represents homecoming. It represents playing our rival. Mm -hmm. It represents seeing some great Pat former players here and really uh, having them be part of what we think is going to be something really special. Uh, so it's, it's, it should be a great week. As, with it being homecoming, with it being Michigan Tech uh, weekend, how do you approach that with the players? Do you tell them to embrace this? Do you try to treat it as just another game? What, what's your approach yeah, to this? Uh, you know, our approach is we're going to treat it the same way we do. I mean, we're really a, a preparation uh, sound body, body, mind, if you will, in terms of how we approach day by day. I don't think you can change, um, and, and then I, I'm a strong believer in that. So we're going to go about our work week the same way we did uh, when we beat Quincy, the same way we did preparing for Hillsdale. Um, th th there can't be much change for us. Let's talk about uh, the opponent, the Michigan Tech Huskies. They come in with a, with a three and zero record, and their team is playing some stingy defense right now. Yeah, always, always uh, uh, good. Since I've been here, it's always been a really special group defensively, and, and and I think offensively they're really good with a senior quarterback who's a four-year starter and uh, all the things that, that that you should be excited about if you're a Michigan Tech uh, fan is in place and I think they've done a heck of a job for a couple of years now, a number of years, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, we're going to have our hands full and we understand that. As you said, a, a senior quarterback and uh, I'm sure you'll be glad to see him go after after this season. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be sad when he's gone, that, that's for sure. Well, as, as we talked about it, is, is homecoming, that brings with it a lot of excitement and, and all of that. Uh, what do you look forward to with, with homecoming? You know, for me, representing this great university as its head football coach, homecoming is special. It's special all across America at every campus. Um, but uh, I think it's, it's, it's really a time to showcase our program first, uh, a, a chance for some alum to get a, an understanding of what I'm all about. Um, and, and then it gives me a chance to get out and, and, and see some people maybe that, that I only see once a year. And then there's some really special people that I've met here. Um, uh, people that have played here, that had r won championships here, that I, I really look forward to seeing this week. Coach, real quick, what are the keys for the Cats uh, this coming Saturday? You know, Ryan, I, I, I told you the keys last week, and we yeah. hit them all and didn't win. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're going to do the same things. We're going to we're going to protect the football. Um, we're going to do a, a, a great job of playing defense in a red zone, and, and I think good things got to happen. All right, uh, we'll look forward to it. Wildcats taking on the Huskies uh, on Saturday. We're back next week to wrap, uh, break it, uh, watch, uh, take a look at it next week here on the Coach O Show. The Coach O Show is sponsored by...